Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Finland once again and we're going to have a look at a beer from another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. This one should be quite interesting because it's one of my favourite styles of traditional German beer and um, it's also my first example of that style from Finland too actually. So that makes it doubly interesting in my book. So for this review then, we are going to go to Pori in the on the Finnish west coast I guess you could say in the southwest of the country as well and for this review we are going to have a look at my first beer from Panimo Ravintola Beer Hunters and they release their beers under the name Mufloni this one is the Mufloni Doppelbock it comes in at 7% ABV and I think you know what style this one is so um, yeah really really curious to see how this one turns out and hopefully it's a very nice example of the Doppelbock style so a massive shout out in this video to my Finnish beer mule Riku Sinaxanaho he lives in Olu on the northwest coast of Finland and thanks to him you will be seeing a steady flow of Finnish beers on the channel over the next months and years and things like this actually so definitely looking forward to reviewing more of these this beer came from Riku box number one which if I'm remembering rightly was either April or May of this year 2020 we've still got a few of the big boys to review from that box but box number two is already uh, well underway we've got some really nice dark beers for that one already and then later on of course Riku will add some IPAs and sours and things like that to it as well but yeah huge shout out to Riku and a massive thank you to him for making these finished reviews possible it's really cool to try beers from Finland because they are so difficult to get and a big thank you to him as well in this video for helping me with the notes he's helped me out with quite a bit of the research for these finished beers mainly because the Finnish language is so difficult actually beautiful sounding language but just you know crazy to try and comprehend actually unless you're a native speaker but uh, yeah really looking forward to this one always nice to review some Finnish beers for you here on the channel and I hope that you guys watching over there are enjoying them do let me know some other examples of Finnish Doppelbox as well and fingers crossed I can review some of those for you in the future as well so um, yeah as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Panimo Ravintola Beer Hunters this is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers as I mentioned there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Finnish beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity but very regularly thanks to Riku and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Panimo Ravintola Beer Hunters and the Mufloni beers so Panimo Ravintola Beer Hunters is a brew pub based in Pori in Finland which is as I said kind of in the southwest of the country right on the coast it's a little bit north of Turku which is right in the southwest and a bit west of Tampere which is kind of further inland on the sort of fat part of Finland if you like so yeah the kind of bottom of Finland is a little bit shaped like this and Pori is kind of around there I hope that makes sense um, but the company it was founded as a family business back in 1998 and it was actually founded by the parents of the current CEO Mika Tukunen so Mika's background is in the restaurant business. He dropped out of high school and began working at his parents' pubs and then he studied to be a chef and then also later on to be a restaurant and hotel manager and he began working at the Beer Hunters Brew Pub. In 2009 he took over the business completely from his parents but his children are also involved in Beer Hunters. His daughter Mila works in the brew pub and the son Emil works at the brewery as well and apparently he is training in Berlin at the moment to become a brewmaster so who knows perhaps at some point he will take over the business from his father and he will obviously be uh, involved in the brewing side of things as well which is pretty cool and um, but the first years were actually very very difficult because the beer scene in Pori was dominated by Porin Oletahas which is a brewery that's owned by Sinebrekov and it was founded originally in 1853 and the people in, in Pori were actually just, you know, very, very proud of this brewery. And it produced a lager called Karhu, which I'm sure actually I've seen over here in uh, in Sweden, actually. I'm sure we get that one through Sistembo Lager. So it is quite a big beer if we're getting it over here. But um, yeah, the, these guys just kind of dominated the market in uh, in Pori and Sinebrekov of course are one of the big companies in uh, in Finland, actually. You might see me review the Sinebrekov Porter a number of years back. That must have been... What, about 2015 or so that I would have reviewed that for you. I think that was just after I uh, 
that was I think that might have been just after I came to Sweden actually if I remember rightly but yeah basically for a long time the Finnish beer market as many other countries where it was dominated by the big boys but what really caught people's attention was that the beer hunters Mufloni Stout was named the best beer of the Helsinki Beer Festival back in 2000 and this really started to change people's views about beer hunters and the locals really started to support them and the business started booming so at the brew pub they obviously have their own small brewery they've also got a distillery there which was added in 2000 2001, and they also have a larger production brewery in the Heralati area of the city as well. At the smaller brewery they've got a capacity of 2,200 litres and the, the larger brewery there's a fermentation capacity of 26,000 litres. The larger brewery of course is used for producing the core range beer so I'm guessing this one was produced there but the smaller brewery is used to make the more experimental stuff the keg beers the pilot batches and all of these kind of things but currently they produce around 200,000 litres of beer annually which is very common in Finland because that's when one of the tax bans change if you go above 200,000 I think that's when the tax ban starts to change because yeah it's all about volume of uh, volume of production over in Finland apparently where that affects your tax bans for the business and um, but at their distillery they produce around 2,000 200 litres sorry of whiskey gin and rum and vodka per year. I'm not sure if that's 200 each or if that's 200 in total but yeah they've got that wee mini distillery there as well. It would be interesting to try their whiskey actually. I've never tried a Finnish whiskey so that would be interesting for me being Scottish. You know I love trying whiskies from uh, different countries as well. Um, but from 2012 to 2014 Beer Hunters owned a restaurant which was called Ravintola Panimo. This was located at the old premises of Sinebrekov's uh, Carhu Panimo Brewery and Beer Hunters also bought the equipment from Carhu Panimo which allowed them to expand the business and this is currently used in their uh, larger production brewery but after quitting Ravintola Panimo they built their new brewery in Heralati uh, as I was saying to you earlier and um, but their beer is sold under the name Mufloni as you can see and this comes from the Mouflon sheep that are living in a on a little lighthouse island which is called Sepi and you'll find that just off the coast of um, of, uh, of Pori actually just in southwest Finland I don't know if anyone still lives on the island or whatever I couldn't really figure that out when I was looking at it earlier, but yeah, it's named after these uh, these Mufloni sheep actually. I wonder if they eat those, because in Scotland, of course, we eat all the different kind of sheep, so I'd be curious to know that as well. But as of September 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have apparently produced around 300 different kinds of beer, which isn't surprising for a brew pub. I know that Malma Brewing Company, they've produced a ton of beers, actually, and it's just, you know, because they brew them in very, very small batches, actually. So, um, yeah, it'd be cool to go, and it would actually be very nice to go and visit Pori and film a little out and about video at their brew pub and uh, you know maybe do a meet the brewery thing with these guys that's one thing that I do want to do when I finally make it to Finland and do a bit of traveling is to uh, to go and do a few meet the brewery kind of things actually with some of the breweries there that would be awesome to do actually so um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Panimo Ravintola beer hunters for the moment and their Mufloni beers uh, if you do want to learn more you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that they've, the, these guys have done so um, yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer huge shout out again to Riku for helping me out with the research for this brewery as well. So um, yeah, as you can see, this one has a really nice little bit of artwork on it. You can see the M of course is designed to look a little bit like a sheep's head because of the Mufloni sheeps. Sheep I should say. Um, <laughs> English is getting terrible these days because I'm doing uh, everything in Swedish. We say hes and heser obviously over here. But um, yeah, this one very very nicely presented. Quite kind of, it's sort of like a classic modern style of art. This one there, you can see just a plain gold bottle cap on this. But um, yeah, this one, as I say, it should be very nice. A seven percent Doppelbock is it's not bottle conditioned actually, which means there's no sediment and things in it. But um, yeah, really curious to see how this beer turns out. Actually, my first example of a finished Doppelbock. And uh, yeah, like I said, one of my favorite. Oh, this one's going to go a little bit crazy, unfortunately. Ah, see, there's we haven't lost too much of it. That's good. That's good. Okay, we'll get it out and into the glass. Then we just lost a teeny little bit of it there, but that should be okay. We'll get this guy out and into the glass. Then we'll just be careful with the pour because obviously. There was a wee bit of build up there. Sugar the last little bit up and get it into the glass. So um yeah, there we go. There we go. Let me just give this a little bit of a wipe up there before it 
goes in and does any damage. There we go. Yeah, there we are. All right then. So yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect with this beer, it's poured a lovely sort of mahogany. It has poured a lovely kind of mahogany, rubyish colour actually. If you shine the light through this one, you'll see a lovely kind of rubyish red colour coming off the beer. Um, it is, it is actually quite clear. This one, and um, you can see there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. Quite a few little ones going up towards the surface of the beer there. When it poured, it had about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say very light, kind of beigey head. Well, to be honest, it was more just of a ring around the edge of the glass there, but you could see when the thing was foaming up, there was quite a bit of, um, yeah, there was quite a bit of stuff, a little bit of foam coming out of this one. So I think it would have had quite a nice kind of light. Uh, beigey coloured head to it. But like I say, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know, overall it looks pretty nice and it's definitely one of the more red coloured doppel box that I've come across actually. You can see little bits of sediment just kind of floating around in this one, but the carbonation as I say is very, very active. So um, yeah, let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one and see how it goes. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us actually and I can tell you just from the wee whiffs I've had of the aroma already I think this one is going to be pretty authentic actually so let's have a go oh yeah that smells pretty nice um, yeah for a doppelbock it's actually it's got quite a reserved aroma I mean you really have to take this one in I think to get the big brown sugary notes out of it but yeah it's, it is actually once you get those aromas, it comes across really authentically, which is nice. Um, so yeah, for me, you get a lovely, you know, you get that lovely big German brown bready rye quality coming out of the beer. Um, you have, uh, you can that, that kind of brown rye bready quality, that forms the backbone of the beer. There's one or two woody elements to it. There's one or two little nutty things in there as well. These are all kind of things that you expect of the Doppelbox style. So yeah, for me... It's got that lovely kind of brown bready base to that German rye bread quality. I do miss the bread from living over there. German bread was some of the best in the world, in my opinion. But yeah, for me, the brown bread that you get off of this, it does come across as very authentically German, this one. So it's past the first test. The aroma is uh, really nicely done, actually. So yeah, lovely big uh, brown German rye bready base to the beer. You've got a nice little bit of a woody aroma to it. There's one or two little nutty things coming out of the beer as well. Um, and for me, there's a lot of brown sugar sitting on top of that. If you go uh, right in the middle of your nose, you're going to get a sweet, uh, you're going to get a very sweet caramel out of this one, but you're also underneath that going to get a slightly more caramelised, treacly molasses note to the beer. You can pick out a few a few more kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity type notes to the beer, but for me, the brown sugars in this one come across as, as quite caramelised and quite thick and gooey and things like that. So yeah, it has, it really has what you would expect. Um, this beer, lovely bready base, good mix of brown sugars in there, a bit of biscuit, a few nutty, nutty and woody undertones and like I say that's exactly what you would expect of this beer style in its malt base. So um, yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, um, you do get a little touch of earthiness out of this one and it is that kind of very smooth, um, it is that very kind of smooth um, light, noble earthiness that you would expect. There's a good little bit of floral aromaticity out of this one um, and that's it's quite smooth again, like it's, it's definitely German noble hops that'll be in this. I would be guessing, I would guess that it'll be German Northern Brewer that's in this and that, you know, I can tell from the, the, the fruity notes and from the, the way that the, um, the kind of grassy and floral characters come out of this beer. It's just something, you know, it's just something you pick up when you like the style so much. You start to learn what hops and things are in it. So this one is, you know, I'm pretty sure this has got German malt, if not Finnish malt, and um, and some nice German hops in it. So this is great. But yeah, for this one, you do get a bit of that kind of floral quality. You get a nice bit of floral aromaticity. There's a bit of a lighter kind of grassy note to the beer as well. And you've also got some really nice um, kind of juicy fruity characters to the beer as well. So you do get a little bit of that richer kind of plummy note out of the beer. Um, you do get some nice lighter kind of figgy qualities as well. Um, and yeah, you get the black currently blackberry notes there right at the front of the nose too. So yeah, some darker kind of juicy plums, a bit of a lighter kind of figgy note to it. And then the kind of 
black currant blackberry notes that you expect. De I'm pretty sure it's Northern Brewer hops that are in this one. A very, very popular hop to use when it comes to these um, these German-style Doppelbox. So, um, yeah, very curious to see what this has in store for us. In terms of the aroma, it is pretty much bang on with what you'd expect, but I do find it a little bit reserved, actually, compared to the... Um, to some of the other examples that I've had. Nothing wrong with that as long as it kind of stands up in the flavour. But yeah, this is going to be my very first finished Doppelbot, like I said at the start of the video. So let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on. So this one is the Mufloni Doppelbock coming in at 7% ABV from Panimo Ravintola Beer Hunters in Pori on the west coast of Finland. Huge thank you to Riku once again for making this review possible and I hope that you guys enjoy this one as well. Hopefully we get a few more from these guys in the near future. Let's get stuck in. Slancia, Skull. Keep his. Oh yeah, that's nicely done. That is nicely done. And um, one of the things that you will always get with these uh, with these beers is you always get differences in the mouthfeel. You know, um, if you try the Doppelbock, for example, if you try the Corbinian from Weinstefaner. Um, you know, I remember that one being quite, um, it had a really nice, quite, I remember it being quite biscuity, actually. Whereas if you go to the Assambok from Veltenberger, you know, that one is definitely really, I remember that being quite dark and treacly and molasses. Whereas if you've got the Eyinger, it's actually very kind of bright. Yeah, the Eyinger Celebrator, I remember that being a bit brighter in its brown sugars. And you know, the mouthfeels of these beers are all different as well. And it's exactly the same when you have a look at these beers from um, from other breweries actually. Uh, the one mistake I've noticed that some breweries do with these is they put a bit of chocolate malt in it and I think the malts that you get on these ones it is more brown sugars. It's, it's, I always find that if they put a bit of chocolate malt in it these beers just don't taste right but this one has um, this one is spot on in terms of how the malt base goes together. This is a really nice authentic one and that's how we should rate these Doppelbot beers. You want them to be nice and authentic. You want them to be really well done like that. You don't really want anything kind of madly surprising from them but you want them to be well done, authentic and you know kind of to the point with the style because we need to remember the Doppelbock is a lager beer actually. It's basically a very very strong uh, Dunkel actually so yeah these beers it's a cold fermentation so it's a lager beer so yeah basically a very strong dunko lager actually and you know scottish sweet tooth this is probably why i like the doppelbox so much i actually can't quite remember what the first one i had would have been it might well have been the corbinian from uh, weinstefana i think it might well have been that one actually but yeah that's a really nice example. So well done to um, to beer hunters for this one. They've done a really good job of that. And I'm hard to impress with this style because it is one of my favourites, like I said. But yeah, I think these guys have done really nicely with it. The first observation I'll make about this one, this is definitely one of the more oily and smoother doppel box that I've come across. Actually, it's got a really big oiliness to it, this one. And it's almost quite slick in its mouthfeel as well, which is quite interesting. Like I say, you've got all these different nuances when you go from brewery to brewery. But yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one then. So straight away with this beer, middle third of your palate, back third of your palate, you'll get that lovely kind of smooth brown bready quality. That blankets the middle of your tongue. The further you go into the into the aftertaste with this one, you will feel that it develops into quite a you know a kind of brown bready, bread crusty type flavour. It's almost like German rye bread like I said to you before, um, and that just, you know, that sits there throughout the whole flavour of the beer, it really lingers there, it is like the anchor, the kind of linchpin that holds the whole beer together, and I like that about this, I do like these beers to have a bit of that um, brown rye bready type quality. So if you go to the front corners of the palate, then you go um, diagonally backwards, um, you get like a kind of, you do get a few of the woody notes to the beer, and if you go to the very centre of your palate and just move a little bit further forward, you will uh, notice this kind of slightly nutty flavour just gradually developing out of this one. For me though, yeah, the nuttiness I think is a bit more obvious than the woody qualities to be honest. I think the nuttiness actually, I find that that really starts to build the further you go into the aftertaste with the beer. And th this is just the, the base, the very base of the beer we're talking about actually. On the back third of your palate, you can feel it does gradually kind of thicken up a little bit. And you do get a few more kind of grainy notes on the back third of your palate as well, which is kind of normal. You do get a little touch more grainy and spicy in quite a lot of beers on that back third of your palate. But then, yeah, the middle third of your tongue 
is where you get a lot of the complexity out of this one so you can feel the different layers of the brown sugars really just building up in this beer so let's have a look at that side of it now so yeah um, in the middle of the palate then as I say if you go to the very very centre of your tongue you do get quite a sweet uh, you do get a lovely kind of big sweet caramel coming out of this one and as you go underneath that um, if you go underneath that, you do get you start to get the slightly thicker, treacly, molassesy type brown sugars there. You get the really, really oily, big brown sugars coming out of this one, um, and yeah, you get the nice kind of as I say, it's nice sweet caramel on the top. The big oily, big, really big oily, highly caramelized, um, treacle and molasses notes coming out of it as well. But um, yeah, this one, um, I think that that really. Um, that really kind of the, the sort of layers you get in the brown sugars of this one are really very very nice actually I really like how that goes together so yeah uh, for this one dog going crazy somebody's coming home but yeah for this one as I say um, lovely sweet caramel in the middle the big thicker more caramelised brown sugars just a bit underneath and then it does feel that kind of on top of the breadiness there's a bit of that McVitie's digestive sort of thing it's almost as you move out from the centre very centre is the sweet caramel you get more of the caramelised brown sugars the treacle the molasses sort of things as the Americans would call it as you go further out and then you get a wee bit of that McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing kind of sitting on top of it as well but uh, yeah I think it, this beer it has everything you would expect of the Doppelbock and it really for me it leans towards those more caramelised treacly um, brown sugars actually which I like I like that it, and that that kind of helps with the sort of slick mouthfeel that it has actually so um, yeah for me it's quite authentic but I would definitely say this is slicker and more oily than any of the German examples of this style that I can think of that I've had but it is really nicely done and that's the main thing whether we like the beer or not so yeah it is quite authentic in terms of its flavour profile just as I say slightly different in the mouthfeel but you quite often find that when you get beers brewed from you know northern countries actually we see that in Sweden as well but um, yeah let's look at the hoppy side of the beer then but yeah um, in the back corners of the palate then you get a nice little bit of um, of earthiness um, coming out of the beer um, and it's, it's quite a smooth earthiness, you know, it's that typical German noble earthiness that you'll get from the Hallertaus, the Titnangers, whatever. But yeah, as you move further forward, it gets a little touch herbal, and as you reach the front corners of the palate, it's got a nice little bit of floral aromaticity to it. As you move just round the front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and more grassy, and this is, these, you know, these are all the things that you would expect of this, um, of this beer style. So yeah, on that front third of your tongue, that's where you get the nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to roll their way out of the beer. So if you go to the very back of that kind of front third of your tongue, you will feel that between the middle third of your palate and the uh, between the middle third of your palate and the um, kind of the back the, the kind of front third of your tongue, you start to get there is a good bit of a kind of toasty. Um, you do notice there is a bit of a, to a really toasty bread crusty thing there that forms the border. But then as you move in front of that, you get the more juicy kind of plummy notes to it. There's maybe a little bit of a kind of pruny or even cakey you know, sort of like almost Christmas cakey type quality there on that, that border region. Yeah, it's a little bit like that. But yeah, you get that kind of plummy, pruny type thing coming out of this one. As you move further forward on the on, the, on that front third of your palate, it's a bit more kind of figgy. Then as you reach the kind of front tip of your tongue, it's just a little bit more oily. And that's where you get the kind of black currenty, blackberry sort of flavours in there. I'm pretty sure it's Northern Brewer that's in here. The other thing that it could be might be like Eureka. The other option would be well you met, but I think it's not quite got enough floral character in it to be to be the American hops, I think. So I'm pretty sure that this is Northern Brewer, and there is just something very, very familiar about this that makes me think that it's Northern Brewer in this one. I love playing Guess the Hops with different beers. And the other thing as well that you have to remember is that different hops will behave differently depending on what malt base you have. A key example of that is Simcoe when you put it into a black IP instead of giving you the soft passion fruit it will give you these really interesting kind of red fruity qualities so yeah there could even be something else in this that I haven't thought of actually but I wouldn't be surprised if this one is mainly um, Northern Brewer actually it's a beautiful hop for doing um, Doppelbox and things with I think it's slightly stronger in its alpha acid than the Hyler Tows and the Tetanangers too maybe about 6% or so but yeah it's got that lovely this one has it's almost a bit cakey as I say you do get more of a cakiness developing out of this beer 
on the front part of the palate the more you drink of it. But as I said, in terms of its flavour profile, it's really authentic. One of the more kind of one of the more kind of treacly, molassesy leaning Doppelbox I've had and very, very kind of thick in its mouthfeel and, and slick actually. Um, but it, it really is it is nicely done and it is authentic and that's what you want from this style. So yeah, on that note, let's go on to the mouthfeel then. So yeah. As I said to you, um, very bit, you know, big oily kind of slick mouthfeel in terms of its body. What would we say? I think this is the kind of bottom end of full bodied. This beer carbonation is very very smooth in this one. I think you know you saw it kind of went a bit crazy when we opened up. We only lost a little bit in fairness. Maybe the bottle was just. I think the bottle was filled up to about here. I think it was actually quite full. So it's it's not surprising, to be honest with you, that it went a little bit, uh, that it went a little bit crazy. Um, but yeah. This one I find it very very smooth actually, which is it's quite nice. Like I say, it's got a big kind of smooth and slick kind of mouthfeel to it. This one quite oily but quite slick at the same time. In terms of its IBUs, um, it's a little bit difficult to say with this one because the earthiness does have a good little bit of bite to it. You do get a few kind of drier grainy notes building out of this beer in the middle of the palate as well. I will say that about it. You do get more kind of dryness building out of this one. I think it's probably about 25 IBUs, something like that. It's not going to blow the head off you in terms of IBUs by any stretch of the imagination, but I would say, yeah, compared to some of the other ones I've had, um, it does have a bit more graininess to it that builds the further you go into the aftertaste. The earthiness is perhaps a wee bit stronger as well. But like I say, malt base has a lovely kind of bready kind of graininess to it as well. You've got some lovely kind of brown sugary notes coming out of the beer, that gives the beer the big oiliness that you expect and you've got a good kind of slightly juicy but mainly quite oily um, fruity character coming off this one as well. The kind of black currently blackberry notes, they linger there into the aftertaste but you get the lighter kind of figgy and slightly cakey notes coming out of this beer as well. But um, yeah, I think this one is really nicely done so I'm going to say thumbs up to uh, Pani Moraventola Beer Hunters for this. I think they've done a really nice job of this so um, yeah I definitely look forward to trying a few more of their beers actually and uh, I will be talking to Riku and seeing what else he recommends from these guys it'd be cool to go and visit um, their brew pub as well actually if they've got loads of different beers in there that would be pretty awesome I love going and filming out and about videos as well actually so fingers crossed that is something that uh, we can do at some point in the in the in the near future. I need to talk to my dad about going to Finland. The whole COVID nineteen situation threw that up because I think we were going to look at going uh, next year at some stage. I would have loved to, I would love to go to Finland and uh, do some touring about and things like that. So uh, yeah hopefully we can uh, get a few more uh, Finnish beers and stuff like that and see a few more places. I'd love to do some out and about filming and some meet the brewery things and stuff like that. So yeah, beer hunters, if they're doing German styles of beer, these guys could be very, very interesting to talk to as well. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's leave it at that for this review then. A really nicely done um, German doppelbot for me. Definitely quite treacly and molasses leaning, really kind of slick and oily in its mouthfeel, but a really nice example. So yeah, thank you to Riku for recommending this one for me. I think this is actually the first uh, Finnish lager that we've reviewed in this box as well, if I remember rightly. We do have a Bock beer to have a look at as well, so that may well be the next one that we review on the channel. So keep your eye out for that. You'll see that maybe in a week or so. But uh, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So this one was the Mufloni Doppelbock coming in at 7% ABV from uh, Pani Moravin Tola Beer Hunters in Pori on the west coast in Finland. A huge thank you to Riku once again. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Let me know your own thoughts on the beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Beer Hunters and Mufloni as well and we will see what else uh, we can review from these guys in the future. I do think that I fancy taking a look at that stout though that won the beer festival so um, yeah I'll ask Riku about that one and see what he thinks. But yeah thank you again for watching my reviews, check out all my social media, check out Beer Hunters and their Mufloni range and I will catch you guys very soon. Thank you again for watching, Slanja, School, Keepis, make sure you check out Panimo Raventola Beer Hunters and their Mufloni beers from Pori on the west coast of Finland. Keepis.